So I've been working on this project for a while now. Figure out I might as well show off something and see if people like it, make it available. Today I'm showing PC32. This is a language I, I wrote. It's basically colorful. The language itself is written mostly in assembler x86 and it runs on a 32-bit platform. The thing about this language is that you can use the source code to encode some extra information. For example, here between words we have spaces. These spaces, instead of being the character 32, which is the normal character for ASCII space, this one encodes the length of a word and the color. And you can use the color to define the function of the word. Another thing of this language is that it's both the IDE, the compiler and the interpreter, and everything is malleable. The source is stored in memory. And for example, you could change anything on the fly. Let's say I want to change the, the background color. Let's say I want it to be a random number. So I get a random number. I put it in the zero space of the of the palette and I get a new background color and I can do it again zero palette store and I get another one but I can read this so let's just type it and I get black again so let me show you an example of the source code interpretation in this language let me go to an empty block over here I think it was 52 yeah so here in 52 let me type something as a comment so let's say I color it as a comment this is a new paragraph this is this is some other text now let's say I want to see what this text looks like in memory right? this is source code so I'm going to define a function or a word as we call them and I'm going to get the current block and I want to dump 16 lines of memory right so here I am defining it and now I'm going to call it in green and this word here shows the screen so I press F5 and I get a dump of the memory of the source code. Of course, just dumping source is not all we can do since the source is stored in memory and especially here the numbers are stored as the actual final byte representation. This is not ASCII. We can just say we have a word called X that puts a, a 1 on the stack. Right, so whenever we call x, this one will be put. But let's say I want to modify the actual source code, not the compiled code, but just the source. So let's say I, I made another word called x plus. That will increase the value of one whenever called. So I just go ahead and fetch the source pointer in the register A and compile it here. Then I add 4 to that address in order to skip A. That's 2 for the length plus uh, 2 for to get to the to the number address here. So I, I duplicate that. I fetch the byte. I swap the items in the stack, putting the address on top. I store the byte. I Oh, and I forgot to add one to increase it. I add one, then drop the address and put a semicolon to finish the compilation. And I call it. So whenever I call it, it should increase the one that in X. So now it's two, now it's three, now it's four. And if I put like a 200, right? It's 201, 202, 3, 4, 5, 6. And all that is possible because the source is in the memory. The compiler sees nothing, it's just calling a program that modifies. 
some memory and that's no problem okay so that's not all we can do the editor is uh, fairly modifiable it can even call code so let me show you something here let me get rid of this and make a word called end rectangle which will just draw a rectangle let's say rectangle size 100 by 100 and I will place it at 200 200 rectangle okay so I call end rect and I display it using this word here and we have a rectangle okay so well let's say that for some reason you want to have that rectangle all the time in the editor you can just make that word blue and you'll notice that the word disappears but when you press F5 and compile this block you'll get a rectangle always in this, uh, in this block and if I were let's say go to another block and call N rectangle make it blue it will appear here as well that's because the editor uses the blue words as a formatting mechanism you can even use them to show spreadsheets and stuff like that let me go back here and show you something here I have an example let's press F5 to display a spreadsheet and if I press escape and X it will put me in spreadsheet mode so I could type like one two three and press enter and it will insert it but it's just hex so let's just say I type 15 and enter and that's an F that's because I'm calling the blue word display which was defined here I'm calling it right here so when the editor sees a blue word it will just execute it if it cannot find it it will do nothing but that's not all you can also look up source code in the editor so that you don't have to like break your your pace it's fairly simple let's say I have a work called render here and I want to look up the source code it will take me immediately where uh, the word is defined and if I uh, press the source back button it will take me back now you can even have something like documentation so let's go here in the assembler right we have an assembler and I say I want to see the documentation for the word comp compare register right so I press the source lookup again and it takes me to the documentation which just says uh, register source, register destination, compares byte A to register destination, set flags. It's just a very minimal documentation. We press the source back button and we're back to right where we were. So let's say we go up here at 55 and let's say we are writing a function that uses assembler, let's say, let's call it myasm, and let's just put it like my ASM will take this 10 and will shift it back by 1, right? So let's say we shift 1, register 0, shift right. And let's say I want to see the documentation for shift right. Here it takes me to the implementation. I press it again and takes me to the documentation. I press back twice and I'm back to right where we were, right? So let's say MASM and it gives me a 5 which you can see in the left part of the screen you can also cut and paste it's fairly simple but it's tailored uh, for 4 so it could and paste words and even if you crash uh, the, the cut buffer will stay saved you will also save every time you press a 5 you save and that brings me to the fact that uh, every time you press escape and F5 you will compile the whole thing from zero right that's not uh, interpretation that's compilation it's compiling everything before you 
lift up your finger from the key. Since my original idea was to make games, the language has graphical capabilities. So let me show you a few demos I've made. Here in the applications block, in block 42, I have a few down here. This is called 3D demo in block 64. And let me just run it, press F5, and we get an, uh, an FPS type camera and a semi isometric view. This is just uh, some geometry I made in Houdini and made a script that just dumps the, the vertices and the colors and render them here in PC32. There are a few more advanced demos here, especially in the SDF demo, which does meshing of sign distance fields. If I press F5, it will generate the model and generate the mesh and render it uh, with the wireframe. And this uses the this block for matching cube uh, meshing algorithm. But I have a few more the dual contouring. Uh, let's see, which is a lot slower, but the edges are sharper. Although I haven't gotten it to work properly with uh, circular surfaces and I also have the marching tetrahedrons so it produces a mesh that has a lot more points but the implementation is really short you don't have to read any table or, or nothing like that finally you can also play sounds here's something I've been working on a little bit uh, of an engine for text adventures if you run it it will change the font and uh, play sounds for each letter also if you notice it uses the comments as the strings so I press F5 and it starts running it waits for input and it continues then ask you for a prompt so you say test or something and it shows you what par what it parsed and that's pretty much it so what does the future hold for the PC32 language well for starters I'd like to start making some new games some actual games to see if the language holds and it's just not it's just you know a toy language I also have to make the more documentation tutorials and I also have other versions of the language uh, I have a 64-bit one I have one that runs in Vulkan I have one that runs with shaders but those are uh, from a few years ago so I haven't updated them uh, so that's pretty much it I'm looking for sponsors so I've made a patreon links below so if you like the language you like what you see and you like it to uh, continue development please do subscribe I really appreciate all the help I can get so that's it for now I'll see you in the next video